Welcome to the Finding Wisdom Show. I'm here with Rick Ramdihal, who's a famous singer. He sings in the community. He sings in the mendirs, the masjids, and the churches. And he sings in a lot more places. We're going to find out today where. We're going to find out all there is to know about Rick Ramdihal. Thank Almost you so much. Almost all, right? Glad to be here. <laughs> Glad to have you here. It's been Finally. how long? I don't know. How long is a Chinaman? I don't know. That's his name. I'm telling you, how long is a Chinaman? Wow. So where have you been up to? It's been so long, though. I've what been up to here. Up to here? Yep. What's been going on? Life. Life is happening all the time. A lot of changes, you know. Um, I'm growing up. You're you growing know. up? I've been in the music business for over 36 years now. But I've always loved singing since I was a little kid in my mom's womb. You, you knew that? When you well, she said school. I was kicking, but she heard some voices as well. <laughs> mom she actually oh helped my mom is one of my biggest ins- you know she's one wow. of my biggest inspirations well if you don't know the rick ram i'm um, the ram Dials, they're all about music right so yes tell us all about your family history. i think from they we came off the boat singer yeah that's what i was told when you came to america no from oh. india oh from india to mm-hmm. guyana mm-hmm. nice in so- bihar our family said their their names are still out there and talked about really and this family Wow, I didn't know that part about you. Okay. For a long time. So you actually traced the history? Yes. Nice. Very nice. So what what part of India was your family from? Uh, Bihar. Bihar. Can you tell us a little bit about Bihar? I have no clue about Bihar. (laughs) You have no clue. Do you know anything about I'd like to go to Bihar. (laughs) You know it's in India, right? I've heard it's in India. Okay. So when, when growing up, when did you realize that you wanted to sing? Mm, I think uh, when I was a kid in um, Blairmont, I grew up in Blairmont as well as in Port Morant. And my father was a leader of a band called Diana Orchestra. And some of the guys in this band were Ibahadat Khan and Henry Duggan, otherwise known as the original Bangali Babu. And those were the two lead singers in his band. Uh, Ibarat Khan is the guy who sang Squash Long and Fine. I don't know if you know that song. Oh, yeah. I and Henry Durgan uh, is the guy who sang the song O Bangali Babu way back in the 60s. Wow. I don't know him. No, well, he's legendary. Wow. Wow. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, the music that you sing and what you've been up to lately? From the time I was about 10 years old, I yes. started singing in Mandirs here in New York. My dad was the first president of a Mandir called the Lakshmi Mandir, and it's currently at around 126th Street and 101 Avenue in Queens. Um, there have been um, many organizations he's been a part of, and with his influence as well as my mom's uh, tremendous support, our family has done a lot of cultural work here in New York for the past 36 plus years. Very nice, very nice. So, so how do you feel doing cultural work and singing to do things for a cause and to help people? Because sometimes you also sing for uh, funerals and different events that may not be so exciting, like doing a show where you're entertaining on a, a stand on a stage, a grand stage, where you're also singing at, at, a, at a funeral? Well, I've been really lucky. Linda, uh, I grew up with some great guys from Guyana that were tan singers. Uh, I grew up with uh, Mahasri Bharat Das. He played the mandolin. Uh, a guy uh, named Balgobin Singh, who's a legend in tan singing from Guyana. He's gone across to many different countries and won awards. Uh, he was a great friend of my grandfather, Mr. Bal Nain, and who's another gentleman who won many awards in Suriname, in Trinidad, in Guyana, and other places. These guys were legends, and I grew up with a man named uh, Kalush Budhu. He's still out here in New York. He lives in Queens. So these are the kinds of names, uh, Uncle G1, uh, Banka and many, many, many other uh, guys. I had the privilege of growing up with these guys as a 12-year-old kid, listening to them sing these old-style 
tan singing. Uh, it's not tans as of in India tans, but it's okay. where it's derived from. There are some... Uh, so is it Chinese tan? It's tans. It's really from India, but uh, it's it's not uh, exactly the way they do it in India, but the rags... You mean the pronunciation? A, there's something different? called a tat. Uh, okay, what's uh, and a tat? A tat is a, a style or okay. uh, let's say a rag, a kalyan or rag coffee. These are rags. You might have heard of them. So there's different the techniques. They're different scales, okay. basically. And uh, they used all of these scales in their singing. But they, the style changed because uh, they were more reliant on the dholak. They had tabla, they had sitar, they had sarud, they had many other instruments in their bands over the, over the years that they brought from India. And they played with all these instruments. We don't have as much of these instruments in our music today, but in my grandfather and his father's time before that, they had all of these instruments accompanying tabla and dholak and sitar and all, all of these instruments playing while they're singing the songs clarinet and flute and so forth. And um, I've heard some of these recordings and these guys were astounding, Linda. They're really uh, top, top of their classes. And uh, we have a lot to learn from them still, no matter what we have learned to date. Uh, we have a lot yet to learn. If we, we can uh, get the recordings and listen to them, there's so much wisdom, as your program is called, Finding Wisdom. Yes. There's, uh, in music, um, there's always something new to learn. And when you think that you know it, that's the moment you should realize that you don't know it. That is so true. <laughs> that's so true. So can you tell us, can you give us a little taste of some of the Tan music? The, mm. Can you give us some? Well, I went to Jamaica for my vacation <laughs> okay. and I had a Tan. <laughs> can you give us some? Sure, I'll, I'll do a, a song. One of my favorite songs to do. Um, Ram Naam Tu Ba He Manwa Ram Naam Tu Ba Re Manwa Ram Naam Sri Ram Naam Tu Ba Re Manwa Ram Naam Tu Ba Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Can you translate the meaning now? <laughs> it means you, you speak the name of uh, Ram, you, you speak in the wisdom and the path that Ram lived. You be more like Ram. You speak Ram's name. You know, people say Radha Krishna, Radhe mm -hmm. Radhe. They're sp speaking God's name. Nice. Can you do a different um, song in Hindi? Sure. Uh, well, you know, I was lucky to <laughs> grow up with my mamu, okay. my mom's older brother, and he loved to sing, so he would come home every day after work and sing. So um, in the late 70s, I grew up with him. And one of my favorite songs that he did, years and years and years later, I ended up recording it with my brothers, Surendra, Devendra, Dharmendra, from the Swarangit band. And the song is Darde Dil. So when he <laughs> sang it, he had so much exuberance and such energy that he livens up any room that he's in. So I kind of got that energy from him. So it goes like, Maine to bas wo likha Jo kuch likhaya Aapne Darde dil Darde jigar Dil mein jagaya Nice, very nice. The audience is enjoying that. I hope so. They're not <laughs> saying anything now. Put what? your hands together, guys. Let me know what you like. Clap, right? They're clapping in their living room. I hope so. Baby, I love you. Baby, I need you. Baby, I want you. I just want you in my arms. That do.
मुशिक बनाया आपने दर्द दिल दर्द जिगर दिल में जगाया आपने दर्द दिल दर्द जिगर दिल में जगाया आपने I just want you in my arms. Aap ki mat ho. Recently, as of uh, my last birth date, I had my last birth date in Mandir. Okay. And I decided a couple of things. I decided uh, that I'm going to do more bhajans. I've done a lot of Bollywood mm-hmm. music. I in my in my uh, in my youth, I played trumpet. I played flute. Played guitar. Played bass. I played keyboards for many many years with the band. And. Um, I decided I want to go back to what I call my roots, which is bhajan singing, okay. and not only bhajan singing, praise and worship singing. I sing a gospel. I sing uh, Islamic do songs. Uh, do my wanna... favorite <laughs> song, my favorite gospel. Uh, I'll sing it for you in a moment when I. Uh, put myself together but i've decided that i want to do more praise and worship whether it's in masjid or mandir or in church i'll do it it's something that i have a calling towards i see i w- want to say i'm sorry about the loss of your father um i know you lost your father recently and um i just want to let you know i'm, I'm sorry to your whole family I give my condolences from the finding wasn't tv show 
And um, I know from talking to you, because we've had some conversations, that you, when you lost your father, I'm sorry, bringing that up, because I feel like he's I'm glad you bring an it up. inspiration. It's good. it's good with me. And I feel that um, he's with you. He's guiding you. And um, I know you had wanted to talk about his inspiration. Could you tell the viewers out there who might be struggling with a death or a loss how you went through to find the inspiration to keep going? I think the best thing you can ever do for yourself is... Um, Realize that none of us are here to stay forever. And the life that you lead today, try to impart some good uh, into another human being. If somebody needs a hand or help or an advice, be there for them as much as you can. I think the more we help each other, the easier things are, not only to get over a loss, but just in general, life is uh, as strenuous as it is. And uh, to help someone takes off a burden off of yourself. Sometimes you don't have to think about it, but you don't think about the, uh, the stress that you're going through when you're helping somebody else. Right. They always say to help somebody else also helps you. Yeah. It hand wash bad. hand. Right. <laughs> Something like that. Hand wash hand and what happens after? <laughs> they get clean. I don't know. There you go. So you you know you fulfilled your purpose. It's clean, right? My so dad I was a great guy. Um, he was a, a leader of the Lakshmi Mandir. He was, I think, the second president of the Indo-Caribbean Federation here in New York. He was part of the East Indian Diaspora Group, um, many other organizations. I believe that uh, when my dad and mom were here in the seventies, they saw the uh, uh, the Northern Boulevard. Um, the Shiva Mandir, I think it was. Oh, I've heard about it. I've never went and, there. And uh, oh. the Mahatma Gandhi Satsang and different, the earliest organizations were probably those two as far as I know. And my dad and mom had this dream that they would do something similar to that and include more folks as they can. And when we came into the country in 1981, um, my dad had already made contacts with many, many peoples that were doing things that he and mom wanted to do. And they started being a part of that, but they started creating their own path as well. And myself and my three older brothers and two younger sisters were a part of that path, as, lo as well as my grandmother. And um, from 1982, my dad helped found the Lakshmi Mandir. Um, in 1982 as well, the first time I was on air was at the Clyfee Madhu radio program, 11.90 a.m. WLIB, and I sang there live as a, a young kid. How old were you? Because I was little and I used I to go like to that. I was like 47. Temple. Yeah, I was about My 47. My parents knew you. <laughs> really? You, you My must, family knew you. Your too. parents have good memory. <laughs> well, they're not here anymore. Else I would show you. They would tell you. They, they used to go to the same mender that your yeah. father, yes. Wow. Even my Aja used to go a, to A little story, I, I want to tell folks that <laughs> ha, has no idea how this, the, this little Richmond Hill, as they call it, was built. Um, I'm not saying that my family is responsible for it at all, but we used to take, um, I think it was the D train from Newkirk and Rugby um, in Brooklyn, then come to the shuttle, take the shuttle across to the A, the shuttle at Franklin, and take that shuttle across to the A train, and take the A train to the last stop, which is Lefferts and Liberty, then walk four blocks just around where Key Food is. I don't know if it's still there. <laughs> yeah, Key Food's still there. And this is trucking along nine people on every Sunday morning to rent the Ma Yoga Shakti Ashram on a Sunday morning to have Monday services for our little community has so much grown yes, since 1982. It sure has. It was mm -hmm. a small little temple now. Yeah. It has grown and then um, a lot of other stuff happened. But with your dad, did you were you close to your father? Did he help to enhance your music? Tremendously. I'm very close to both of my parents. Uh, my dad, my mom is amazing. She's always supportive. Uh, amazing strength. Uh, I think um, a woman's strength carries any family stronger and longer. 
I think women deserve all the credit for holding families together as much as they do. And without leadership from the, uh, at the helm of the, the, the patriarch, without leadership from the family, the woman is not going to support that. So if my dad had great leadership, my mom supported it, that made a good team. And if we we're good kids, then we would listen. <laughs> and for the most were you part, a good kid? <laughs> for the most part, I was uh, I was the brat. Oh, but you've changed a lot. I'm, no, I'm, no, yeah. no. I'm still the brat. I'm still the brat. You've My brothers changed a lot, sister, and I'm sure your you dad mean, was very proud of you. Um, wow. You can always uh, grow. You know, you can always grow with wisdom. You you can take the lessons, or you can allow life to force it upon you over and over until you get it. That's so true. Do you have any um, words you'd like to leave the audience with? Any tips on how to make their life a little easier if they're going through a hard time? Any pearls of wisdom you'd like to Yeah, share? I definitely got a few pearls. Okay, share. Um, <laughs> love is the most beautiful thing ever. And no matter what you're going through, even if someone is giving you a hard time, love that person anyway. You might not change every single person in the world, but you will change yourself for the better. And others will see that reflection of love in you. And sooner or later, it'll catch a fire, it'll grow. If you don't water a plant, it's not gonna blossom and grow. You know, if you don't treat people with love and respect, whether it's in your family or in your community or your friends, one by one, you might lose those contacts and friendships. But once you water the plant, it will grow. You know that film Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner? It said his father had died and he had this vision. He had this big open farm. I don't know if it was Iowa or somewhere. So his father's dream kept coming to him and says, build it and they will come. I think my dad saw that vision years and years in the 70s. And when he brought us all here uh, in the 80s, he had that vision with my mom's support. They built it, and this community, I think, is better off for it. I'm, I'm glad my dad and mom did what they had to do to help build our community better than uh, it was when they saw it first. That's All I can say is love each other. Just love is the answer. I feel like John Lennon or something. Love is the answer. I like that. Mm. <laughs> you, you sounding like John Lennon. <laughs> but um, you're right. Love is the answer. Love is what makes the world go round, right? Yeah, if it doesn't go around, <laughs> just give it a twirl anyway. Yeah. Well, love makes lots of things happen. And with that last statement, um, it, it's thank you so much for being on the show. Finally, I'm <laughs> glad to be here. And um, we have to have you come again. Um, okay. If the audience would like they to They wouldn't have a problem you. with it. You guys are not going to have a problem with coming back, are you? <laughs> email me and let me know, okay? Finding was in TV email at gmail.com. And I'll email. forward it to her. I'll change everything. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that works too. Email him. So how could the audience or your fans out there get in contact with you? That's it. My email is rickramdell at gmail.com. Great. So if you want to get in touch with Rick Ramdi Hall, get in touch with him at rickramdihall at gmail.com or Facebook the heck out of me. <laughs> or <laughs> reach me at Linda Singh, Finding Wisdom TV at gmail.com. Thank you for watching the Finding Wisdom show. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>
चांद से है चांदनी कहा लौट के आना है यही तुमको लौट के आना है यही तुमको जा रहे हो जाओ मेरी जाओ मेरी 